Hey guys, this is Mr. V and this is uh, Abe's Review Video, Topic 2.3, um, which is about island biogeography. So one of the things about island biogeography is this is a theory that uh, discusses how um, ecological relationships are can be determined by the distribution of the island. So here on the outset, uh, on the picture here, we have a little look at the Galapagos Islands. So these are pretty famous and we're gonna talk about this example throughout. Um, but the idea is that over time, there was a lot of movement from the mainland over on the right side, okay? And it led to migration um, from the mainland out to the islands. So you had uh, several rounds of species fly over or migrate over or get caught in a storm while migrating and they ended up moving and so the idea of island biogeography is that with the movement of these species there were certain islands that were more suitable for habitation and that's what led to that evolution of different species okay so depending on how far they were and how big the island was that had a big impact on whether or not these um, the movement of species was successful so here we have an example of four islands so here's the mainland on the left side now and on the right side over here we've got four different islands we've got island a okay island b okay island c and island d so the idea for uh, island biogeography is that the islands that tend to be the closest and the biggest would have the highest biodiversity so why is this so which one would it look like? It would be, in this case, island B, because this allows for the migration over from the mainland to be shorter than having to travel all the way out to the big island C out there, okay? And even though the travel to island A over here is much shorter, the problem with that is it may not have as many resources. So B tends to be your better one because it has, it has much more resources. It's closer than some of the other ones. And the worst one here under this theory would be trying to get all the way over to Island D because it's such a long trip and it is such a small island, the resources may not be there for new ha for new species. The habitat, habitat may not be suitable, may not have the right seeds or food or um, soils to support a diverse ecosystem. So that's why the typical answer would be, and your best answer would be Island B here. Okay. So what does that mean? The idea is that if you've got limited resources, you've got limited food, territory, shelter, um, you know, things like that, that's going to lead to um, more specialist, more speciation and more competition. So islands themselves are going to be more likely to have different uh, species and you know, different biodiversities. A big example of this is Australia. Okay? Australia has been separated from the mainland uh, continents for a very long time and they evolved species in the same niches as those of um, the mainlands but they are all marsupial species or many of them are marsupial mammals um, because of the fact that they've been isolated for so long so they are specialists um, in the wildfires that happened in 2019 you saw many koalas that could not uh, handle uh, the wildfires because they ended up uh, being specialist and you know while they did do great on their own um, once you have some disruptions, as we mentioned in the previous PowerPoints, those or in the future ones, excuse me, that's going to be a problem for those species. So the classic example of island biogeography is Darwin's finches, right? So the idea is that there was one finch, uh, an ancestral one, that had many variations. It had the genes for all of these other finches. And that as it spread to different islands, there were certain exaggerations of genes that did better. So if there were really hard seeds that were large, then the large thick beaks did well. Okay. If there were smaller beaks that were better prone for catching bugs, then those tended to show up much better. Okay. The warbler like ones. Um, and then you had the insect ones, the woodpecker like ones, right? So much more different species formed because the islands themselves had different resources. So having an island, even though it's small or big, no matter what, will give will lead towards that speciation. Okay, and now this ends up leading to problems. You can have generalist species that are really good at doing very well in any habitat. They can become invasive. Okay? 
um, they'll come in and they'll beat out those specialist species. Um, and that will lead to usually competition that the specialists are just not able to keep up with. Um, and then you have these species that have limited defenses. So we, this is the, a picture of the dodo bird. The dodo bird uh, lived on an island called Mauritius, um, just off the coast of Madagascar. And um, it didn't do so well in the presence of humans because it had never seen humans. And it was this big, large, general or specialist species. And humans came in at the time, this was in the um, 15, 1600s, and they came in and they ate uh, a lot of these dodo birds and you know, they went out extinct within 50 years of humans showing up. So they're just, they were just not able to keep up and they have limited defenses. So here are some resources on how uh, some of those species do and whether or not they do well or not. So hopefully that was helpful and we'll see you in the next video.